Okay, for the last time, I am not a method actor. Hey, dude. Yeah? Check this out. <laughs> Doug, why are you still screaming? My face is back to normal. Seriously, dude. Do you not own a mirror? You're hideous. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. And it has been way too long since I've done an effect from Lucifer, so I'm doing one today. And today we're taking on the devil face effect. Now I'm basing mine on the season one, season two, where it just sort of flashes on screen a little bit and just goes away. So we're going to concentrate on that today. Now in order to complete this effect, you need to film your actor just pretending to have a devil face, I guess. Whatever that looks like that may make it look like I'm trying to do a poo. Yeah. Now, since this effect does actually use a fully rigged 3D model, you will also need either the full version of Cinema 4D, or of course, any 3D program of your choice that uses FBX files. I'm gonna be using Cinema 4D today, but don't let that restrict you in any way. I'm also creating my devil model in Adobe Fuse and exporting that to Mixamo, but if you don't have access to Adobe Fuse or Mixamo, you can head to filmliner.com slash downloads and download this devil model for yourself. And that's it. Shoot your actor, get the 3D model, and let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, here we are in After Effects and I've got my comp set up and ready to go. Now my first step here is to isolate the last little bit of this comp. We'll call this our devil face part. So I'll head to the end of the comp, move back say 10 frames, there we go. And from there, we'll hit Control Shift D to split the clip. And from there, we're gonna right click and hit pre-compose. Making sure we move all the attributes to new composition and just hit okay. From there, let's open up this pre-composition and we need to do a little bit of masking. Specifically, we need to isolate the collar from my hoodie and the jacket. Just isolate that completely from the background. So firstly, let's duplicate this layer so we have a background layer now. Let's select the top layer, head up to effect, Boris effects and grab Mocha AE. Naturally, we're going to hit that logo and start Mocha. Inside Mocha now, let's head up, grab the X blind tool, and I'm going to draw a mask around the hoodie part of my jacket. Kind of regretting wearing a hoodie right now because there's a lot of points here. I'll just adjust a couple of these curves and there we go. Let's then pop down. Set this to 90%, turn off shear and rotation since we don't really move around too much, and let's track forward. Done. Now just to keep things all nice and neat, I'm just gonna head up and name this one Collar. Let's now repeat those steps for the jacket. Now the reason we do separate tracks here guys is mainly to decrease the size of the surface area of the track so Mocha doesn't have to work as hard. When you break up a track, it makes it easier for Mocha to track individual parts with less chance of it dropping and you needing to adjust. And we're done. The last thing we need to track is our face just to match the movement for our devil face. So let's repeat those steps again with a portion of the face. That bit's fine. Hit track and done. Let's save that and head back to After Effects. Back in After Effects and we want to select our mat. So we'll just click this button right here. We'll deselect the face, hit OK, and then we'll just check Apply Mat. Done. If we turn off the background layer, you can see we now have our clothes both tracked and isolated. OK, one last step before we start on the face. Let's head up and add a null object. We're then gonna select our track layer, head to create track data, select the face, hit okay. Let's then head down to export, set that to transform right here, and then we're gonna select our null, and of course, hit apply. This is gonna give our devil face some subtle movement adopted by our face track later on when we import it in. Now it's time to add that devil face which brings us to Cinema 4D. So I actually made this devil model up using Adobe Fuse as they have a zombie model in here. 
this guy right here. I then had a bit of a play customizing him to make him look a little bit more like me. I know, we could be brothers, right? <laughs> yeah. I then played with the textures to make him super wrinkly and gross. Now I actually have a three part tutorial on working in Adobe Fuse and Mixamo, Cinema 4D and After Effects to create a CGI stunt double. So be sure and check that out by clicking the card above because I'm not going to repeat all of that information in this episode. I've got this model for download if you want it down in the description if you want to be lazy. But now before we go into cinema, first we need a still for this shot right here for reference. So let's hit Control, Alt and S, and that'll add a still to our render queue. All we have to do now is hit lossless and set it to PNG and render that out. Now gang, it is time to head into Cinema 4D. Okay guys, here we are in Cinema and as you can see I have my model imported and all set up. Now the only thing I have to do is try and match my shot as best I can. To do that, I'm going to head up, add a background element right here, head down to the Materials Manager and add a new material by double clicking. I can then open that up and in the color section right here, I'm going to import my still that I just rendered out. Done. Let's now drop that onto my background layer like so. Awesome. We now have that still imported into our project. Now I've done a pretty decent job at guesstimating the camera placement already and I knew where I had my lights in the scene I'll just quickly show you the lighting setup. I have a backlight right here. I also have an accent light right here and a key light to the front. And that's pretty much exactly how I had them when I shot my footage. So I'm pretty happy with how this is set up. I know it's not 100% and that's just down to the model and I not being twin brothers. But these are all sort of small things that we can fix later when we've got it in After Effects. Now a little quick tip, when you are actually getting this shot into place, you can actually click on the geometry of the model, this bit right here, and you can just head down and check X-Ray. That way you'll actually be able to see through the model, which makes it a lot easier to line up the eyes, the nose, the mouth, what have you. And when you're done, just uncheck that. But if there's anything you take away, just try and match it as best you can. Let's go ahead and head up to render settings. Now I have ambient occlusion on, and if we head to output, you can see I've set this to HD 24 frames and I've saved this as a TIFF sequence with, and this is very important, alpha channel checked. Now guys, it is also worth noting that I'm rendering with the physical renderer so I can get some sweet depth of field. I actually talked about this a little bit in my little Nas X robot dancer video. So click the card above for my info on that. Now last step, and I almost forgot, we got to turn off that background. Bam. Now, one thing you might actually have noticed is that I have a little bit of animation here on the model's face. When you build a model in Adobe Fuse and you send it out to Mixamo, you actually get the option to add some facial blend shapes to the model. So all I've done is add a subtle kind of evil smile to my model. Now, animating all these sliders here in the pose morph section can get very, very complicated and it really deserves its own episode. So guys, if you'd like me to talk more about animating facial blend shapes, please let me know down in the comment section. But for now, we're going to hit render and head back to After Effects. Back in After Effects and I've imported my TIFF sequence. All I have to do now is drop that into the comp under our first layer and <laughs> wow, that looks pretty bad. You can see my head here, my eyes are a bit too high, my neck doesn't fit in parts, essentially it's a mess. So how do we fix that? Easy actually, but let's start small first. Let's parent the devil face to the null object. Next, we're going to grab the pen tool and just mask out any part of the devil's body that is poking through our jacket mat here. Done. From there, let's hit pre-compose on both the null object and the devil, just group them together. Okay, now we can start adjusting. I'm gonna head to effect, distort and grab liquify. From there, I'm gonna grab the push tool, maybe size it up a little bit and start adjusting the face to match my face a little bit better. Basically, we just wanna cover up my face. A little here, 
a little there, and that's starting to look pretty good. Now guys, this is why it's important to match the shot as best you can, so you don't have to go really overboard with these adjustments and make the face look all weird. Sure, this can be time consuming making these adjustments, but the reason I didn't shoot a background plate is to force myself to make this thing fit my face. That way when we transition between the two, it's not a big jarring effect, because we've gone through the process of matching the face proportions as best we can. The only other thing I might do is to match my eye line a little bit better, is I'm going to head up to effect, distort and add a mesh warp in the same menu, it's just right here, and we're gonna lower, say, the amount of rows and columns, and just lower those eyelids subtly like so. Now, if you need to hit T and lower the opacity to see everything a little bit better, by all means do that, guys, and you can also turn the layer on and off to check the layer under. The end result should look like this. It's not bad, but considering it only has to be 10 frames of screen time or less than half a second, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. The only other thing I did with this, guys, is I just added a bit of color correction to blend it into the shot a little bit better. All I did was use Color to 4, guys, but you can use any color correction software you like. If I turn that on and off, you can see what I've done there. Now, if we head back to our final comp, the last thing we have to do really is transition between the two shots. So we go from regular me uh, to devil me. Now to do that, we're gonna use something that has been in After Effects since the Stone Age. Let's firstly head up and add an adjustment layer. And there we go. We'll then head to effect, generate and grab light burst. Okay, let's now head along the timeline until we're on our edit point right here. We're then gonna hit the stopwatch on center, maybe move it over here, lower the intensity to 50, and we're gonna set the ray length to 30. Let's then skip ahead two frames and bring that ray length down to zero. We'll then move back before our cut, another two frames maybe, and we'll repeat those settings. And we maybe move the center off a little here. Once again, set that ray length to zero. Now just to shine on the shot a little bit more, I added a couple of big fire elements to the background of my shot from Action VFX, and I added some glow to the eyes. Either of which you don't have to do, it's just something I wanted to add. And the end result looks like this. And that, my friends, is another effect. Done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. Hey dude. Yeah? Check this out. <laughs> So guys, that's my take on the Lucifer Devil Face effect from Lucifer. As you can see, while a little bit tedious in parts, it's a pretty easy effect since it's only limited to, say, 10 frames or so. And if you like, you can go even shorter than 10 frames if you want to get more of a season one vibe where it's just like one or two frames. Now, if there are any effects from Lucifer that you want to see or any effects from anything else that you want to see, leave them down in the comments, guys, because I read them all. But for now, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, smash that like button. I really do appreciate it. And it does help out. There's plenty more film learning on the way, so stay tuned. And speaking of stay tuned, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button below and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single film learning episode. I've got two other episodes right over here, including my Lucifer coin effect. So check those out and check out all my socials over here and keep learning.